Hello again, YouTubers on SpongeBob 101 back here again on the SpongeBob channel. Today is October 10th, 2019, and I'm making another video that I was not planning to make. So yeah, I was just uh, browsing the internet today, and I came over, uh, came across this interview uh, that was done with um, the SpongeBob producers at New York Comic Con. So I figured I'd do a video for you guys to share with you uh, some of the interesting points that were uh, talked about in this interview uh, at New York Comic Con. So um, if you haven't checked out our previous video, uh, we talked a bit about it's um, the third SpongeBob movie and some of the books that will be coming out next year. So that's actually pretty cool. Uh, moving over to The Beat. So again, this uh, interview was done by um, The Beat. Uh, the link to this interview can be found in the description box below. I'll also put a link to it, um, you know, when I started talking about this. So anyways, without further ado, let's just get right into it. Um, so this interview was published yesterday on October 9th. And basically, it's a interview conducted with um, Vincent Waller and Mark Cicerelli uh, regarding Spongebob, of course. So... Um, I'll just read some parts. I'm not going to read everything. If you want to read it for yourself, again, the link is in the description box below. So feel free to go check that out. Okay, so um, basically it starts by talking about the tragic passing of Stefan Hillenburg. Um, and of course, the upcoming Cam Coral animated spinoff as well as another season, the 13th season, uh, third movie. Of course, It's a Wonderful Sponge that we talked about in the previous video. And then we're going to get right into the interview here. So um, the interview basically starts with the question, when did you start working on Spongebob? So nothing too special. Vincent Waller has been there for a long while. Mark Cicerelli has been on since season eight. And they talked about um, taking on the producer roles. Basically, you know, uh, Vincent Waller has been there for a really long time. So he's really experienced. And of course, um, you know, he eventually climbed up to the producer role. So um, this one, this question says, how would you compare Spongebob now to the first season? So um, Vincent Waller talks about how um, they changed from the cells um, on cells to digital animation and um, also how they locked down some of the models because it was very expensive to keep having multiple models uh, a whole plethora of models i can understand that i mean it's a economic decision and still i thought the quality of spongebob um in terms of animation was still pretty good so uh, storylines of course everyone has their opinions but um, in fact i actually pretty uh, i really like the animation from season seven and eight um i think i'm in the minority here i don't know comment box below do you guys like the animation i mean this disregard the storylines okay uh, did you like the animation from season seven and season eight so anyways we're moving on here um and yeah so mark cicerelli talks about you know, animation, um, finding individual voices in the drawing end of the show. So, and an affinity for expressions. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll be looking at Fred, uh, you know, my leg uh, in the bottom of this interview later. So, uh, an interesting thing here, um, if you guys don't already know, at the panel at New York Comic Con, um, the, well, the cast of Spongebob, or in or, I mean, the producers plus the cast. Um, they announced that there was going to be this Patchy the Pirate special. So um, here, the two give a little bit more um, detail about it. So Mark Cicerelli says, that was something they wanted to do for the 20th anniversary. They wanted to do a clip show. And the Patchy special is going to be a clip show where he's stranded on the island and he's reenacting sequences from his favorite episodes. So this is a pretty good concept. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be showing the animated characters in this episode because if they don't it's going to be a little bit weird because um since the very first episode spongebob animated spongebob has been in every single okay at least spongebob whether it's animated or stop motion has been in every single episode thus far so um i would assume that spongebob uh, well will make a cameo somehow or they'll just consider patchy reenacting spongebob as spongebob i'm not sure about that how, how that's gonna work uh vincent waller says for whatever celebrity is stranded on the island and has to suffer the clip show with his slightly with this slightly crazed part wow okay so um 
perhaps it's going to be a special guest in that episode. That's going to be interesting. So is all of so is this all in puppets? So Waller says it starts on land and then goes into the thing you actually want to see. So, um, Patchy the pirate underwater, maybe I don't know. Um, okay, so. I can't help but be reminded of the ingenious ways the Simpsons handled their clip shows. We're doing a similar thing. We're trying to find our own way into a clip show and make it as weird as possible. Now, um, here's a disclaimer. So I've never actually watched um, Simpsons and clip shows. I'm not even too sure what a clip show is. I, I have a rough idea, but I don't think I've actually watched something like that before. So um, I'm actually looking forward to this. This is going to be pretty cool. And yeah. So that is about it for the Patchy the Pirate special. Now they're gonna move on to what can you say about the third SpongeBob movie? Okay, so this is one of the biggest million dollar questions that I have in my mind right now. And Mark Cicerelli says, we really don't have much to do with it because it's being done over at Paramount. It's so hard to do just do all the just to do all the things we're doing on our show. Waller says, the last time Nickelodeon basically said, we want you to make a movie, but you guys can't stop production this time. So we stayed put and they made a movie. So um, again, this just lines up with what we already know. There are different teams working on the show and on the movie. Um, and yeah, I mean, of course, even if these guys knew anything um, detailed about it, they wouldn't be sharing it with us because, you know, confidentiality and... Um, the, yeah, they don't want to spoil things, right? So, um, well, that doesn't really give us too much new information from that. So we'll just keep moving on. So how do you keep this show fresh without jumping over the proverbial, proverbial shark? So we, which we actually did intentionally in the Sharks vs. Pods episode. I think that was a pretty good episode. Do you guys think that was a good episode? Um, uh, yeah, the, the ending was pretty cool too. With Squirrel, of course, being sad as usual. But anyways, um... So yeah, uh, Waller says, we're lucky enough to work on a show where they let us um, try new things, right? And SpongeBob does come out with cachets, so as long as we're doing things within the realm that they need to be, uh, we can get as well as we possibly can get. And uh, of course, this is something we, I, personally, I've noticed over season 12, the episodes are more weird in a sense. Some of them are really funny, some of them are uh, over-expressionist over expressionistic is that even a word and um some episodes i don't really like because of the very fact that they just try to you know come up with all sorts of random ideas um but i mean overall in general i think it's a good thing to try new ideas of course my personal opinion is that not all ideas are good ideas so yeah uh, but anyways and then the conversation moves on to tim conway and um ernest borgenine um, and of course, both of them has have passed away. So, uh, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy will not be having. Um, well, uh, they're not going to be voicing themselves in um, in SpongeBob anymore. But of course, we've seen SpongeBob and Patrick cosplaying and becoming their versions of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, like in Man Ray Returns, right? So. Uh, yeah, and Cicerelli says, I like writing those episodes and keeping those characters' memories alive and finding a new way to do it. Now, this is a good idea, definitely. I, I agree with that. Okay, so now um, there have been some big name guest stars on the show. So, um, personally, I don't really want to talk about this because it's a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, it's not family friendly. <laughs> I'll just move on, okay? So, at the panel, you mentioned that St uh, Hillenburg got to see the SpongeBob musical before his passing. So, I'm curious what were the, some of the last things he was involved and saw. Okay, so Waller says, I think the last episode he was at a sound mix uh, for was Pineapple RV. Now, this again has not premiered in the United States, but I believe has premiered in Poland. Um, I've seen it in Polish or Russian, I can't really remember. Uh, and I really like that episode, by the way. So I'm looking forward to seeing it in English on iTunes because I like to watch my episodes off iTunes out of the season pass. So yeah, um, that one's definitely g uh, a good one. I don't know why Nickelodeon didn't premiere that over the summer because it w would definitely fit in with a um, summer, uh, during the summer, you know. Okay, anyways, I was very happy because he was laughing uh, all the way through it. If we can get him to laugh, then I know we're sitting pretty. 
Okay, so that was about that. Was he able to see the birthday special with voice actors playing their respective characters in live action? No, unfortunately, he did. He he didn't get to see it, but he knew that we were going to do that. He was really tickled by the idea. So then the conversation goes on to、uh, voice directing. Tom Kenny is a voice director in the show now, so that's pretty cool.、Um, and then of course the. Um, important thing here. So, what's next for SpongeBob? So, Mark Cicerelli says、uh, we're doing the spin-off Cam Coral show, which we're having a blast writing. Putting the characters in this new location freed up the writers, and they've come up with new ideas. Now,、um, as much as the blowback to Cam Coral was pretty huge,、um, I really like new SpongeBob content in general. And of course.、Um, I have to watch the content to know if I liked it or not. But in general, I like having、um, the option to watch new content. And although it's a you know it's stated, stated here is different dynamics with the characters because they're a little younger, but the comedy is not younger. And if you guys have been catching up with SpongeBob,、um, a lot of the com- comedy is really comedic. So yeah,、um, that, that's that's gonna be a good thing.、Um, and it's it may. Be a bit more subversive because we're doing the same kind of physical comedy with the younger kids, okay? And、um, some animated shows like to have firm continuity, while others play fast and loose with it. So,、um, yeah, you know, SpongeBob really has like flip flops on this a lot. So sometimes they play with it, as Waller says, and sometimes and then mostly ignore it as far as canon and having a through story. So、um, some things make. Like continue from others and、uh, and but most things don't. So, yeah, the running joke of my leg guy is the perfect example of that.、Um, of course, he's Fred, and yeah, it was、um, the idea of Doc Lawrence, and yeah. So every my leg joke. So I feel like my leg is taken a little bit too far. I feel it's like it's in in too many episodes nowadays. So yeah, just like on Squid, I was watching Squid,、uh, Squid's on the bus,、uh, a couple days back. I was re- watching it over again, and you know, Fred was there with his leg. So yeah,、um, have you considered taking that further and doing an entire episode without SpongeBob? Now I don't want them to do this at all.、Uh, but okay, Waller says I think Sp- everybody is ready for the other characters to have their moments in the sun. But it's the SpongeBob show, and it's always been about this community in Bikini Bottom. The performers are so strong, and the characters are so well written.、Um, are written so well. There's a lot of depth to each of the characters. It's really easy to write humor for these characters, especially Squidward. I mean, you guys know what happens to Squidward that makes you laugh. So yeah, I'm not gonna say it on video because I don't know. Maybe that's not family friendly as well. But okay,、um, okay, maybe not really family friendly, but like not kid friendly. So yeah, we just probably shouldn't talk about it. Anyways, because they're deep and so have so many facets to them. Okay, so have you noticed any changes in the performances since the beginning?、Um, okay, so they were just talking about Clancy Brown voicing Mr. Krabs and Tom Kenny voicing SpongeBob. Favorite episodes? Cicerelli says the stop motion Halloween episode, which、um, I guess was okay. Legend of Bikini Bottom,、um, the Christmas episode. It's a SpongeBob Christmas was also okay. Um, it was interesting though, stop motion. And Waller says mimic madness and、um, like par- plankton paranoia.、Um, more of the dark episodes. I feel I don't really like those two episodes, but okay, it's my opinion. And then finally, last question: What should fans look forward to in twenty twenty?、Uh, Waller says lots more great expressions from SpongeBob in two D, and of course the CG that's coming up. Of course, it's a wonderful sponge. We're gonna see exactly. Where we can go with that? By the way, CG.、Um, it could be it's a wonderful sponge. It could be Cam Coral. Either one. So yeah,、um, Cicerelli. Okay, CG. I think it's Cam Coral. Yeah, it's probably Cam Coral.、Um, Cicerelli says there are a few more twenty-two minute sp-、uh, specials coming at the end of the twentieth anniversary celebrations.、Uh, those are pretty special, great episodes. One of the episodes has a lot of interesting musical moments.、Um, hopefully, this. Uh, it's gonna be better than、um, Hello Bikini Bottom from season eight. Now I had lots of high hopes for that episode, even while while I was like a kid,、um, and、uh, my expectations were totally shattered、uh, with Hello Bikini Bottom because you know just seeing the 
song at the at the start of the episodes in in、uh, trailers was like this episode is gonna be great. So、um, it didn't turn out to be. Hopefully, this would、um, you know live up to my expectations. I hope. Okay, and another has a crazy sort of take on amusement parks and what's underneath them. So this refers to.、Um, The special episode beneath Glove World or something like that,、um, Escape from Beneath Glove World. Yes,、uh, if that's what if that's the title I recall. Okay, so but basically it's a two part special, so twenty two minute special. So you know I always look forward to specials. They have pretty great storylines in general. <clears throat> Not Hello Bikini Bottom, but yeah. So that is about it for this interview.、Uh, what are your guys' talk? Thoughts on、uh, this interview? Comment box below. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, favorite, comment, etc. Keep right here on Ultimate SpongeBob One One, and I'll see you guys in the next SpongeBob video. Bye.